I would say 2110 is a form of future proofing. Like, you know, SDI will probably get you to 10 years, 2110 will get you to 20 years. As they add things to the campus, this control room can continue to handle whatever they throw at us, giving us the ability to keep upscaling. By design, 2110 will scale. So 4K, 8K, 16K, it will still pass down 2110. That's the beauty of 2110. I was complicating it more than it needed to be. From the big picture standpoint, IT is not hard and it's not complicated. And, and if a guy like me can, can uh, pick it up, I mean, anybody can do it, really. My name is Chad Hall. I'm the owner and CEO of Take One Broadcast Solutions. We're a system integration company, which means we design and build uh, broadcast studios. So our customers are television studios, churches that have multi-camera broadcast infrastructures, mobile television trucks, uh, universities that are doing sports broadcasting. We even build small fly packs for doing video touring on the road and things like that. So anything that has to deal with multi-camera, live tape broadcast production, we design and build those systems. ST2110, it's just another way to say video and control over IP. So instead of using SDI cables and copper wire like we've been doing forever, now we move all that information over a single network cable. Some of the things that our customers today are scared about are some of the horror stories back from the early adopters that tried IP. But the great thing about uh, SMPTE ST2110 uh, is that they have taken all of this information and basically said, we're going to uh, create this standard now that everyone's going to get behind. And so you know that you can build a system that's cohesive, that's going to talk, and they're all sharing the information, the same information. They're all sh sharing the same uh, timing and other things that encapsulate the ST2110 protocols. Uh, and so knowing that we have a standard now has uh, taken away all of the things that the early adopters really struggled with and have scared a lot of people from trying to adopt ST2110. My name's John Bright. I'm the senior design engineer here at Take One. We are working on this project for the University of Kentucky, and it is um, their first foray into the ST2110 world. Once you understand the, the overall design of a 2110 system, you realize the ease that it can create for the end user. Okay, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Well, I, well then that, with that, because I just don't... Uh, my name is Jason Kress. I serve as president of Take One Broadcast Solutions. So as we look at 2110, the biggest thing to consider is the scalability. With uh, colleges, with churches, there's always this need to expand. Uh, when we're in the baseband world, the, the expansion comes in chunks of equipment. You can buy gear and then it's topped out at this point, and it's topped out at this point. Well, all those scalability issues are solved with 2110 as a much easier pathway uh, to seamlessly move forward without kind of reinventing things that you would have to if you were if you were tied to a, just a just a baseband system. It absolutely is more scalable. It it literally comes down to adding another switch. For instance, in a baseband system, this entire rack would be filled with one router. This device right here replaces all of that. And so if you need to grow it bigger, you put another one of these in there and you still have the rest of this rack to fill up with whatever else you need. So it's definitely scalable. The cable infrastructure is drastically reduced. Uh, in a typical router where you have, you know, 500 ins and 500 outs, you've got a thousand cables. When you're dealing strictly with a 2110 system, that can all be accomplished on 12 strands of fiber. All of that copper in interconnectivity is gone and you, you don't have to deal with all that cabling. So one of the challenges with IP, and this is something that always comes up, is that IP has got to be more expensive. I always hear that it's just more expensive than a baseband system. It's like, well, th the answer to that is yes and no. It, it really depends. Hybridizing or piecemealing your way into it, you're probably going to find is the mo more expensive way to go. But if you have a customer uh, such as, as University of Kentucky that we're doing here, where they say, we're going to start from scratch. We've got a blank slate, an empty canvas, we're going to come in and design this system from the ground up. That's where you see your savings because it's actually substantially cheaper than it would be in a basement system. A 
my name is Scott Heilman, Director of Broadcast Engineering for UK Athletics. For us at UK, we were originally going to be doing a baseband system, but then it was fiber constraints and just flexibility was the biggest thing. It's like, how do we tackle all these different venues? You know, we have football, baseball, softball, soccer. We're so spread out that we needed something to kind of combine everything together. You know, whenever we start planning for games, it's, all right, we got to figure out how many cameras we want, figure out how we're doing intercom and audio and bringing in effects mics and bringing in announcers. You know, we try to make things as streamlined as possible, but in a way that's most efficient. 2110 is a form of future proofing. Like, you know, SDL will probably get you to 10 years. 2110 will get you to 20 years, even past that. Because the, the, the goal you're looking at 2110 is, is that you're not limited by how many like physical spigots you have on a router. Once you hit the max on a router, you're done. You have to either buy another frame or you have to buy a bigger frame. And at some point, you're maxed out at how big you can make your router frame. 2110 network, you can just add a switch and then you can just keep building on top of that. You're only limited to how many IP addresses you can create and there's millions. The sky's the limit with 2110, so 100% releases the handcuffs on your growth. Well, after a lot of hard work from our crew, we are at a point where we are almost complete with this control room. We're really close. So we have a fiber infrastructure that's coming in from campus. This allows every venue, so football, baseball, soccer, softball, tennis, swimming, all those areas have fiber to them that come all the way back here. And that's, that's a huge part about the 2110 infrastructure giving us the ability to keep upscaling. As they add things to the to the campus, this control room can continue to handle whatever they throw at us. For example, if we're doing a men's basketball in this control room, and at the same time there's a football game going on, well, here we have a almost completely mirrored control room that we can do football and basketball at the same time. But also from an educational standpoint, every uh, student that is operating these uh, pieces of equipment, they are learning things that they are going to be able to use out in the real world post-graduation. So it's a great reality when they can come down and sit at pieces of equipment that if they were hired on a, on a video truck somewhere else or another permanent facility somewhere, they'd be seeing the same equipment. And this room literally bridges the two control rooms together physically. Control room A out here, control room B over here. But it's a bridge of camera control area. So all the cameras, whether we're doing one event or two event, everything is controlled from here. And if you can hear, probably maybe in the background a little bit, there's a, there's a uh, right behind this wall and through that door down there is the machine room or the rack room. That's where all the quote unquote magic happens. Uh, so that's all the main pieces of equipment. That's where the fiber from other parts of the campus come in. Uh, all that's housed there. And with the 2110 and the fiber structure as the core of this system, we've got a long way to go before we ever get close to running out of space and out of the technology that's going to keep them uh, doing what they need to do. Experience is the ultimate teacher in television broadcasts. This space is going to help teach those future television broadcast engineers. They're learning on equipment they're going to see in the industry that is future-proofed that's not going to be going away anytime soon. They get to produce big time and they get to put that on their resume. So investing in this was was such a huge step for this university to, to put our foot into the conversation as of we want to train the next generation of broadcast professionals. So the problem that broadcast engineers and media directors face really is the fact that baseband, as much as we love it and as much as it's been around forever, it is going away. It's sunsetting, whether we like it or not. We, and we're going to hold on to it for as long as we want, but it is eventually going away. So at some point, IP is going to be part of your future in broadcast engineering. So the question really comes down to, do we make the change now or do we plan for it later? It has to be one of those two. I think if, if you are a decision maker, I would highly recommend 
uh, going and visiting a 2110 facility, uh, whether it's in your town or if you have to travel somewhere else, to go look at it, see all the benefits from it, and then you'll get a better perspective as to why you should move in that direction. The big things to take away with 2110 are, it's such a new technology, you need someone who's gonna go along with you and who's been doing it for a long time. We've been working with Take One at UK since 2014, since the first year we launched on NCC Network. They built our first control room and they've built every control room we've done with them ever since. And so you need someone who's gonna stick with you after the fact, five years down the road, 10 years down the road. And that's what we've had with Take One since 2014.